Hi everyone, we're back upstairs at, in the Juliet Art Museum today at the Clay Center and we are looking at our exhibit Retooled again. So today we are taking a look at this photograph called Spinning Wrench by a photographer named Bernice Abbott. So this is a really beautiful uh, example of repetition here in this photograph. What she's done is basically taken step-by-step -step photographs of a wrench going through its job or how we would use a wrench. So when we're using a wrench, we're probably trying to unscrew something like a bolt, right? And when we do that, we have to turn it, the bolt in a circle and that's where the wrench comes in. So this is like if she had taken a second-by-second -second shot of someone turning a wrench. So it becomes this really beautiful sort of dance across the photograph of a wrench doing its job. It's really beautiful and simple. Show what kind of job a wrench does and how important it is. All right, so today's activity, we are going to be exploring repetition, um, like Bernice Abbott's photograph, Spinning Wrench. So what you're going to need today is very simple. All you need is a piece of paper or a couple pieces of paper, however many you want to make, a tool, like this hammer that I have here, and some markers. Um, I suggest getting a couple different kinds of markers, maybe some different colors. You can use crayons, pencils, just get some writing utensils. Um, and this is sort of what it's going to look like when we're all done. So what you're going to do, first thing is just take your tool and put it anywhere on the paper. So I'm going to put mine just kind of right in the middle. And I'm going to take my marker and carefully draw the outline of my tool. Awesome. Now I'm going to take a different marker, different color, and I'm going to move my tool a little bit. It doesn't have to be crazy, you don't have to move it too much, you can move it wherever you want. Take your new writing utensil and trace it again. All right, and then we're going to do that one more time. How about right in the middle of those two. And you don't have to keep a solid line every time you trace. You can try using dashed lines or dotted lines, skinny lines, thick lines, whatever you want to do. Honestly, the more kinds of lines you use, uh, the different kinds of markers, different writing utensils, the cooler this will look at the end. So I'm just going to leave it there for right now. But what you're going to want to do after you have as many outlines as you want in all the different kinds of colors or line styles you have, start looking for the shapes that these outlines make as they overlap each other. And we're going to color some of them in and see what that does to the composition. So I'm going to color this middle one in here. And maybe I'll color something in up here too. And again, you can do this as many times as you'd like or as few times as you like. You don't have to go crazy, but you can. But what that does is it starts to kind of change the way we see the shapes and the outlines, like in this one. The more you color in, you know, how does that change the tool? Can we still see the outlines? How does that, you know, how do they relate to each other now? You can even start mixing your colors in these little boxes and see what that does. But really, you can just kind of have fun with this, make as many outlines as you want. You can even use different tools. You don't just have to stick with one. Just get creative. 